Good morning. Does anyone know what RE find is? Oh, I do. Ah, there are always some smart guys. <laughs> That's the idea. RE find is basically a boot manager. And as you can see from the name, it is R EFI find. It's a boot manager for EFI. What are its specifications? You can, oh sorry, I will tell you about its specifications. I will tell you about the configuration options it has, which are quite a lot. Stances and what they are. The icons and how they work. And how you can install it. I will also talk about the installation on Arca, step by step, on Linux, and even on Windows. So depending on which way you want to come in to put this boot manager on your system, you should be able to do it from any one of these three systems. Which one is the easiest? You have to determine a little bit for yourself. I also want to, about to tell you about adding the shell and memory test to RE-Find. <coughs> you can add to this book manager a number of things automatically. I also want to tell you about what is good, in my view, and some of the quirks that it has. Okay, let's have a look at the start screen. You immediately see this is a graphical boot manager. Normally, when RE Find starts, <coughs> it will start with a particular boot which has been previously defined, which you previously used. Whenever you go across to the particular icon, it will tell you automatically underneath what that icon represents. Now, if you have a look at this, I think you can see this must be Arca, Windows, Linux, Linux Mint, and the last one is something. You also have a number of smaller icons underneath, and I'll tell you what they are in turn. You see, normally when it starts, you get this. Automatic boot in three seconds. Of course, you can change the timing. <coughs> It will also tell you which item you've selected. And in this case, it's Linux. So this is Arca, Windows, Linux, Linux Mint, as I said, and an unknown OS. This is for the EFI shell, the memory test, MDK key, which is used for making keys in Linux. Of course, the I for information. Hidden tabs, we'll go through more of the detail later. Power off, so you can power <coughs> off directly from the EFI the refind. Or do a warm restart or even go into your BIOS. It's very uh, nice, it does a lot of things. The escape key can be used at any moment to stop the automatic boot. And you can select the item you want. 
also very nice. Our find is free. It is made by a guy called Roderick W. Smith. Nothing to do with our Roderick. And it is on a GNU license. It is only for UFI systems. You can't use it on MBR systems. It does a dynamic detection of operating systems and tools. So that's very nice. You just put it in, it finds most of the stuff. You have customizable OS launch options. You can choose a graphics or text mode, and themes can be customized. It has Mac specific features, including spoofing the boot process. Does anyone have a Mac here? Then you can be spoofed. Yeah. yeah? So also for Mac, it's, it's a very versatile uh, program. It has Linux specific features for automatically detecting the stub loader. And it has support for secure boot. Secure boot we will talk about in the next presentation. The refine configuration file is simple enough in the refine.conf. This, like all programs for UFI, to start the system, are in the EFI partition. In this case, in the EFI partition, EFI refined. Some of the things you can do is you can enable the mouse. So you can start this and use the mouse to select what you want to start or use the cursor keys. You can even enable using a touch screen. So those of you who have a touch screen, it can be enabled and you can point to what you want. Of course, you can set and disable the waiting timer. So you say, well, you know, give me 10 seconds to think about what I want to do, or just disable it completely. You can even specify the icons that you want to see. You can specify the size of the icons. You can make stanzas, and I'll explain what they are later. You can change the screen resolution. And there's a lot, lot more. So you see this is a really versatile program. And you can, what should I say, uh, manipulate it in such a way it is exactly what you want. There is a lot of information about this uh, program, and you can find that on the web when you look up rodsbooks.com refine. Just if you search for refine, you'll get such a lot of information, you'll be surprised. OK, let's have a look at the configuration file. In refine, text is indicated by having the hash sign as the first character on the line. All the rest is then just information and it is ignored in refined itself. Each available command is also documented by a number of lines of informational text. For an example, if we take the timeout command, this is what you see in the configuration file, and you see immediately hash, 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 hash. What this will do, timeout in seconds from the main menu screen, setting the timeout to zero disables, and so on and so forth. This completely describes what this command does. In this case, you see hash timeout2, so the timeout command is not active. 
or at least or only as the default value. For every command, you get the same information. So you don't have to look up somewhere else what the configuration command does. Is that clear? Okay. Here are a few of the commands. Timeout, which we just said. Shut down after timeout. Whether you want to store stuff in the MVRAM or not. That's the variables that Refind itself uses. You can set the screensaver. I won't go through all of these, but you can see there are more than enough. You can also set the size of the icons. You saw on the initial screen you had the larger icons and the small ones underneath. You can change the sizes if you wish. Even more, <laughs> it keeps going on. <coughs> Here, the important ones are you can enable touch screen, enable the mouse. You can even make the mouse pointer size because often as not, <coughs> when you switch on, you can't see where the mouse is because it's too small. It has such a lot of stuff. It's unbelievable what you can do. <coughs> I'll let you read them. I have a question. Yes. This is only available for new UFI systems. Right? Correct. Yes. Okay. That's in the name R. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. No. He meant AI one word, sorry. <coughs> Things to note escape key always stops the timer. Using the arrow keys also stop the timer. So when the initial screen comes up and you're moving across to select using the arrow keys, the particular um, item that you want, the timer is disabled. Using the enter key on the selected item, as you would expect, selects and starts that item. Moving the mouse, if enabled, also stops the timer. Logical, but... Arrow keys can move the selection as well as the mouse. Arrow keys are always enabled. And as I said, the enter key selects the item to boot. You have a couple of extra keys, the insert, tap, and F2 keys. They all select an option if available. In my case, I had, oh sorry, in my case I have Arca OS and I can select the option to boot Arca OS from drive C, Arca OS from drive D, <coughs> so I have two different Arca systems available to me. You may have different boot systems, one may be as a maintenance or what have you, or you just have a slightly different configuration file for Arca and you want to use that particular version. This can all be done with the options. You have a minus key which allows you to hide an entry if you don't want it. This can be handy because the system automatically finds bootable systems. And you might end up with a hell of a lot of systems. And instead of going into the configuration file and saying, I don't want this, I don't want that, on the screen, you select it, use the minus key, and it will no longer be shown every time the system starts. Stanzas. What are stanzas? 
Well, the system does a hell of a lot automatically, but sometimes you might want to have a particular boot item in a particular way. The stanza is just an extra part of the configuration file. In the stanza, you specify the volume label and partition or the partition GID of the loader you want to activate. Or Linux RAM disk name, you can specify an icon. So you specify for that particular system, that particular icon. Oh yes, the, this, this is, everything must be there and you just specify. If it's not, it just doesn't find it. Yeah. You can specify submenus and submenus just give you more options. It's basically a repeat of the main menu. You can disable the stanza. This is done so you don't have to remove everything in the configuration file, but you should say disable the stanza or enable it. You can enable and disable graphics in the stanza. Plus it has a number of options. I will give you an example of three stanzas, then you get a better feeling of what a stanza is, what it can do. Here, you see the menu entry for Ubuntu. And what we're saying is, we have a menu entry for Arch, which is a form of Linux. It then says, what icon I want to have displayed on my start screen and where it is. It tells you the loader and everything else concerning that particular boot. Then there is the menu. Windows via shell script and again specifying what and where I should boot from. Those are stanzas. It's just another way of defining what you want, but giving you the option to have multiple versions of something. In my case for Arca, I have a stanza in which the first one says, load Arca. Then with drive D, the next part of the stanza is load Arca from disk C. So I have built up the way I want it to act. All icons used in an RE find can be found in the icon folder. There are approximately 80 of them, so that's quite a lot. REFINE uses the OS subfolder name to automatically select the icon. So for example, you saw yesterday EFI slash OS2. And then we have the boot for Arca OS. So by the name OS2, goes through his icon list, finds the icon OS2, and uses that on the display screen. For example, if you have a directory Ubuntu, this is the icon you get. And if you look in the icon file, you will see OS underscore Ubuntu PNG. This is for Linux, but for OS2, there is no default icon. So what happens? It uses the unknown icon. So initially if you've loaded re find 
and it's found all the various systems on your machine and you have Arca OS somewhere on there you will get this last icon for OS2 but that's simple enough to change by creating an icon in this case the Arca OS icon you can put that in the icon list and it will then automatically use that icon. For anybody who wants that icon, I can supply it to you. You can get it now or later or send me a mail or you can make it yourself. It's up to you. Okay, icons. Ari find use icons with the following formats. Apple, PNG, <coughs> BMP, JPEG, PNG, and ICNS files work the best because they support transparency. Otherwise, you just get a black square around what is otherwise transparent. The dimensions of our refined icons are as follows. For the operating system, it uses 128 by 128. So if you make the icon for Arca OS and you make it yourself, make a PNG icon of 128 by 128. As easy as that. The tools row, which you saw underneath, is 48 by 48 and special ones are 32 by 32 pixels. You can find all this information back in the documentation bar I refined. And as I said, adding ArcOS is simple enough. Create a PNG file, copy that using the name OS2 PNG, and reboot, and when you reboot, the original unknown icon will automatically be changed to the OS2 Arca OS icon. Simplicity itself. As I said, if anybody wants a copy, I made this one simply from the main screen. Okay, how do we install Refine? Where do I find Refine? So, first of all, you have to download all the programs you want, RE-Find, the EFI shell, a memory test, all that stuff you want to use and put in RE-Find. First, make a backup of the EFI partition, and as I said yesterday, do not copy it to a FAT32 partition, <coughs> copy it somewhere else, either external or to a JFS partition, because otherwise the system might find it and then you have a, a sort of duplicate start and you're not sure which one is used. That's the problem with starting UFI. He looks for the EFI partition and the way it does it, you're not really sure. Make sure you only have one EFI partition. Once you've got those files, you can, for example, install an AN launcher, copy the files that you want to the ESP partition, the shell to the ESP partition, and you can add to RE-Find the shell entries to the AN launcher's configuration file. In other words, you're using the AN launcher to get you to be able to use are refined. Those of you who are using Arca on UFI have presumably the AN launcher. After that, you move RE find as the first boot. And you do that by using the shell program which we discussed yesterday.
Okay, here are the locations of RE Fine. So if you go to this website, you'll be able to download RE Fine. The EFI shell, you can download. The easiest way to find that is, funny enough, via the RE Find Authors website and look at add-ons. It's a lot easier than trying to find it directly. So as I said, you black up the complete ear partition to an external location. Install AN if not already installed. So computer, system, setup, select your ESP partition and select install AN launcher. That's the way you install the AN launcher in Arca OS. Has anybody done that yet? Has anybody installed the AN launcher? It gets installed by default. Uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah but you can install it directly yes. by selecting it. It should be installed by default. Who has the AN launcher? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, well, that, that's always a problem. Who is using UFI here? How do you start the system? <laughs> Just switching it on. So you, it, it starts. I have only, uh, only two. Okay. Well, even if you only have OS two, mm -hmm. I would suggest using the launcher <coughs> because then you can also have a backup partition, a maintenance partition, if you like. So you can then, if something goes wrong, start the maintenance partition and correct your main system because we all know things go wrong. You only have had to make a little change in configs, and it no longer boots. So, put in the AN launcher. Mm -hmm. Seriously. So it's simple enough. If it's not already installed, using the system setup, and you can see here exactly what you have to do. Okay, once you've installed AN, you need to extract REFINE because it's delivered the zip file. Copy the complete folder and contents to the EF file folder and call it EFI REFINE. UEFI as we know, is for more systems. So not only x64 systems. So you can delete the drivers specified here, AA64 and IA32. They're only required for specific hardware. Nobody's heard me yet. I start again. <laughs> no, but the EA32, EA um, I seem to recall that 32 bit support for UEFI has been dropped already. Yeah, ages but ago. The, the, these drivers are supplied automatically in the refined um, ah, okay. zip. So you, you, you can leave them there, but why? I mean, if you have files that you A, don't know what they do, get rid of them when you do know what they do, which is when you first load the system. Back up the default refine config, for example, by copying it to refine comp sample. Then you know if you change anything to the config file, you can always go back to the original which works, and you can see that you have done correctly. The EFI shell, you can extract that. Again, it's from zip files. 
and you make sure you select the x64 directory of the shell because otherwise the shells you will have the wrong executable for the, your system that you can copy to the EFI boot directory that's where RE find expects to find the shell and we should now have all the EFI files of, oh sorry all our files on the EFI partition you can now go to the AN launcher and you can add these lines to the AN launcher RE find equals with the address and shell with its address so when you now start the AN launcher up you have also the ability to start refind you have the ability to start the shell and if that's the way you want to leave it you can so if you reboot select A in launcher and select refine you can then see if it works as it should when you start you should at least see two icons unknown <coughs> one will be the launcher EFI and the other will be the OS2 loader because he doesn't really yet know what they are if you want to make RE find the default you have to move that into the, in the MVE RAM as the first item okay reboot and now select shell to see if that works if the shell works correctly you should see immediately some flashing information which is basically the auto start script coming on and then the screen will display the shell prompt <coughs> so you know that the shell has been correctly loaded and is working is this clear up to this point or everyone is just ignoring me <laughs> the shell prompt is always <coughs> in yellow now since we want to add our refine to the list of our boot items we need to put this in the MV RAM this is if you're not going to always be starting it from the AN launcher the shell has those commands to do this so you have to make sure that the shell first works as I said earlier this week we have a command therefore the BCFG command boot configuration and as I said earlier this command you can move add and so on the boot order remember drives in the shell are FS0 FS1 and so forth no drive letters first thing to do is to make sure we can see what are our boot drives and use the dump command and this is what I also showed you earlier so you've got this complete list of the bootable devices in the MVE RAM you can't see this very well but I'm trying to find it myself now where it is well there's all the uh, okay the top one is the AN launcher this is Ubuntu uh, Windows DVD ROM test <coughs> and nothing there so there's yet the RE find to be added so simple enough you just type in bcfg boot add in 
to zero to the very first item that will be booted. Yeah, that's a zero. And in my case, it was on the FSO drive, FS0, sorry. And this is then the path to RE find. And I give it the name, you don't have to, but it's always <coughs> handy for identification, the boot manager, RE find boot manager. So as I said, boot add to add, zero very first position, the drive, the file name, or path name actually, and just a description. So, if you type in the following, bcfg add boot zero fso, and then type the tab key, it should find, because we <coughs> want to make sure it goes to the EFI petition, EFI. If you see FSO semicolon EFI, then you're on the right disk. If you can't find that, then maybe it's on FS1. Yeah? Using the tab is an autofill function of the shell. When we've got that, we just add the RE find path name. And that is what you should eventually <coughs> have. It may be FS1 in your case, but if you only have one hard disk in your system, it's going to be FSO. I have two in my system, an NVE RAM, sorry, uh, an SSD and an NVMe option. If you've entered that command and it is accepted, you should then see that the target is zero and it is added the command you've just typed. After restarting the computer, it should start with the EFI, sorry, with RE find. You can cross check if you go into UF BIOS. This is my BIOS. Yours may look slightly different, but what you get is a list of boot devices. In my case, it says he's put RE find as the very first boot device. Yes? Just a quick note for everybody. Not every PC has such a menu. Uh, ju yeah, just for clarity, there are PCs where you get fooled. There are also computers when ArcOS tries to update this list that it will fill. I actually have that laptop right here in front of me. After installation, you need to go into the UEFI firmware and manually set the boot order. It gets added to list. And there are also laptops where you cannot even edit this yeah. list and it keeps looking for Windows until then you delete I it. I would ask you to use, to load the shell and do what I've just done to load RE Fine and see if it works on your laptop. I'll try that. Okay. But basically, <coughs> this should work. The shell, the EFI shell, is part of the EFI specifications in the way it works, so it should work with UFI. But like everything, there's no guarantee. So if you now restart the computer, as in my case, I see it will start with refine, it should. And as I said, the first time it will start, you will get the unknown icon. If you want to have more than one version of Arca OS, it is not as easy as you might think adding a duplicate entry in the configuration. The system does not, RE Find does not display 
duplicates. So if I have 10 versions of Arca OS on my system, all have different partitions, it will only show one, which is a bit of a shame. How do I get to the others? Well, we use a stanza, which we said. And here you see what the stanza should look like. It's the standard stuff, the icon we're going to use, the loader we're going to use, and I'm now options now, and the options are D and E. Because I have on drive of partition, oh sorry, I have uh, for partition D and partition E two <coughs> versions of Arca OS. When I start refind, I go to the Arca OS icon. I use the selection key F2 to show the hidden items, and then I can either select D or E. If you want more submenus, so you don't only have two, you just add them. So this will be an example. If I had, let's look, D, E, F, and G, four Arca OS partitions. In the AN launcher, you just add an extra line every time for Arca OS with a petition. That's how you do it in Arca OS. Questions till now? Okay. Oh, that's possible. Oh, no, it's there. Sub, for example, oh, oh, you mean because of this one? It's possible. If we go back to the, uh, it's the same, and th this works. So I think, <laughs> well, you you're intelligent enough. If it don't work, you add the uh, extra. Ubuntu. Does anyone use Ubuntu here? Okay, so if for now Ubuntu, you can easily install or refine. This is the way you would do it. You go to the repository basically as super user, ask to get the update, then get install refine, and then when it says yes or no, you say yes, <coughs> and it does it and then it is automatically installed. So it, in that respect, it's a lot easier than from Arca OS. Refind was initially built for Linux and has been expanded and can be used with many systems. In this case, you just shut down the computer and restart it. It's how automatically have moved, refined to the first item in your boot menu. Oh, sorry, this is the thing you get, automatic install. That's the message you get. As I said, shut down and reboot the computer. It is possible to install refined with secure boot uh, in the case of Linux, it uses a shim in the pre-boot loader. I won't discuss that. But basically, the shim is a method of using secure boot and being able to start the bootloader. If you want to read information about it, here's the address.
here you see what happened after I started with Linux on my system. It had automatically put Refine as the first item. Windows. <laughs> In case you want to try that. Again, it's downloading the zip files. And from an elevated prompt, get to go to the EFI partition. By the way, if you're looking uh, for the EFI partition in Windows, you're using the Disk Manager, make sure you expand the screen enough so that when you go with your mouse over the very first partition, it should show <coughs> EFI partition. If it's very close together, you can move the mouse around and you can't find it. Again, so you just select. We talked about this when we were talking about uh, uh, the um, identifying your EFI partition in Windows. It's the same thing again. Here you unzip again and you move everything into the EFI partition. Again, those are the drivers you remove because we don't use them. And you set REFINE as default. To do that in Windows, we have a similar command to BCFG in the shell, and it's BCD edit set boot manager path. So from Windows, you can directly change your boot order. If you wish, you can also set a custom description. Reboot and REFIND should start up. That's basically REFIND. Questions till now? OK. <laughs> Sure. Well, this is this is in reference to the Windows. Sometimes in some of the newer versions, newer builds of Windows 10, that methodology through the Disk Manager to map the drive will not work. You have to launch an elevated command prompt and then mount the volume. Use that is possible slash, with the slash s. Yeah, that 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 is possible. That that's the problem with Windows. It keeps changing, but. I've given you one method. If that doesn't work, I'm sure you could go to Arca OS, it's easier. <laughs> well, probably. Yeah. Somebody else wants to <coughs> ask a question? Yes, Sandra. I've seen uh, consumer laptops. Uh, which came with an MB, uh, MBR partitioned uh, disk uh, with only four partitions possible and still a UEFI boot system with uh, uh, UEFI part uh, these specific uh, EFI partitions on it. So, so a kind of mixture. Uh, is a real uh, BIOS which you could uh, yeah. Uh, uh, not reached because the boot time was zero for the main base and had had uh, no um, almost none of uh, any options in it. This is really hard to uh, get at least uh, the way to configure anything on these machines. Yeah. Uh, I was able to uh, get Windows to boot these. Uh, boot manager for some kind and uh, then enable a sm uh, short timeout and uh, after that I could do something and uh, wipe out the broken Windows system and at least install Linux Mint on it. <laughs> but was this a UFI system? Yes, it's uh, from, from a strange kind of uh, UFI uh, system with a modern uh, laptop with Windows uh, 10 or even 11 on it. So for these consumer laptops, uh, they have really more or less removed any uh, classical BIOS options. Everything is on the disk, and you have to get 
to boot the disk, disk uh, menu to uh, do anything on these machines, or even change the boot order to uh, be able to boot your USB stick with uh, ArcOS or anything else on it. Yeah. Well, um, we are constantly all surprised when you buy a new laptop or what have you, how the thing works and how different it often is from what you hope. I can only speak from my own experience here with my laptop and it worked in the way it was described in the specifications. Uh, what I mean is when I looked at the website from Refined, uh, using that I, I could do this so you know I can only give this as an indication this should work but no guarantees. Uh, yep. Just a note for Sandra, I would be very interested to see that system, and here's why. In all of the testing that I've done with UEFI, Windows will flat out refuse to install on an MBR disk. So I'm very interested how that works. Just try and boot uh, a Windows 64-bit version, create, for example, an MBR disk with DFC, then try to install it. The moment that you open the Windows disk editor, it will say, uh -uh, and it refuses it. So I'm very interested how they created this Is hybrid MDR. Windows MDR's. 10 or Windows 11? Hmm? Windows 10 or Windows 11? Are Doesn't you matter. About? All Windows versions. There's th this is why I always recommend GPT. Windows, from my experience, is extremely black and white. Yeah. If you boot on you, if you boot on uh, on BIOS mode, it's MBR. And if you try to boot it, to try and install, uh, and if you boot it in UEFI mode, it will only accept GPT. I've that, been that's reading true. on the forum. Yeah. yeah. It uh, doesn't do anything else. No. So that's why I'm interested to see this hybrid MBR construction. And I'm not. No, no. I, 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 I understand. I, I, would al I, I would also recommend if you buy Arc OS that you don't buy some cheap ass uh, low, bra low crap laptop, but usually the high end business models are usually a bit better. Yes. And maybe it costs two, three hundred euros more, but usually the build is also a lot better, and also the BIOS menu is better, the UEFI setup. So. <laughs> Glenn, did you say you tried to load RE find yesterday? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. said uh, Windows changes quite often and what used to work doesn't and <laughs> so on. <laughs> and if, if you have a question, let me know that the microphone comes away. Otherwise, yeah. you know oh. yourself how rotten it is sitting at a, listening to a remote conference and the like. Okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry, it was my mistake. I asked you the question. Um, what I will say is after this presentation, Anybody who wants to come and try it, I will help you through. A one-time offer. <laughs> 50 euros a minute. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think some of you should try it and at least load Refine. If you don't use it, it's easy enough to remove. Yep. A lot of people are coming to an age, or already coming at an age, that they need to wear glasses. The AN launcher is great. However, I've already seen this work on screens with a very high resolution. <laughs> I think your system is a great candidate, Albert. What is your screen resolution? 2,000 times 500? No, this one is 
Ah, okay. No, I've seen a laptop from Alex Taylor that has a screen resolution of 3072 times yeah. 2048. If you look at Aon Launcher, it's a postage stamp. So you get this small thing, which is about two by two centimeters roughly, and because it gets scaled down. The benefit of Refine is that it's graphical because the AN launcher is text mode and it scales down the map yeah. and the so further resolution. And trust me, with each passing day and month, you will get laptops with bigger and bigger resolutions. And if you then look at the AN launcher, you go like, huh? I also had to use a magnifying glass to almost read the text. So if you get a, a, a new laptop with a high screen resolution, a and launcher, install the system, and then switch to refine because yeah. then at least you can read it without yeah. needing getting a migraine. Uh, that was going to be one of my comments in the summary. Um, <laughs> you <laughs> you can with A and launcher, by the way, uh, change the dimension which comes on the screen. The only problem is you're only making the area bigger and not the text. So you still have the same problem. <laughs> but if you add something to AN Launcher and you have a very long description, it will normally be truncated. So you need to first of all expand the box so the text that you've added is not truncated. Okay, memory test. Um, there is um, an EFI memory test <coughs> it's very nice. Um, it's very handy because you can test your system without starting mm. your OS. I've added this memory test to my EFI boot system and it is automatically <coughs> detected by Refine, at least if you use the right uh, file name. So, you can download this from this address if you wish, <coughs> and you have to place it in the tools directory in the ESP partition. Are you just stretching or want to ask? <laughs> okay. <coughs> when you reboot, after you've done this, REFIND should find it, and you will see that one of the smaller icons which I displayed at the beginning will now be displayed and you can start the memory test automatically if you wish. You can also add the shell to the REFINE menu. And this is the icon of the REFINE, sorry, of the UIFI shell. To do that, download the ESO file, copy the following file to EFI <coughs> tools and use the shell x64.efi as the item. Shut down, restart, and now you will also have, when you start REFIND, the option to start the shell. You might find this hmm, a little bit daunting using all these commands and everything. However, there is a Windows tool, if you wish. It's called Easy UFI. Originally, it was uh, a free to use tool. Now it is free to use for a short time. So if you decide to do this, do it quickly, otherwise the tool no longer works. So this is basically what the tool looks like. It only works under UEFI. And here you can see it has found what I have, because this is mine, the boot manager, the AN launcher, Ubuntu. It's showing you everything that is there. You can get this from this address www.easyufi. This allows you to change the boot order and everything very simply, but only works under Windows. 
and it only works for a limited time. Obviously, once you've selected what you want to do, that remains. Okay, are refined. Do I like it? Yes. <coughs> Is it sometimes quirky? Yes. But it has a lot of plus points. As Roderick just said, one of them is your resolution of the screen doesn't matter. He fits everything into it. You could still read it. It is a highly customized boot manager. It does have a high learning curve. It's not as simple as AM. Excuse me. <sighs> Getting him. Um, AN is very simple, but it has its limitations. It is extremely well documented. When you see the number of pages on internet from Rod Smith, there are quite a few. In the program itself, as I said, in the configuration file, everything again is well documented saying what every particular configuration command does. So that I think is perfect. If you enable the mouse, the uh, first time I had RE find, I didn't even realize you could use the mouse. You got the item that would be used was highlighted. I thought, that's great. Because when you start up again, it remembers what you'd last selected, <coughs> and you, I saw that. I added the mouse, and now it didn't do the highlight. A quirk. As you move the mouse, it does highlight the item. As I said, it does remember the previous used item, rather like uh, Airboot. So, if you constantly, every time, starting with Arca, it will do that every time. If you use Ubuntu, which I also have, I did an update, and it screwed up some stuff in RE Find. So, my warning to you is, if you have Ubuntu, before you do an update, make a backup of RE find in your ESP partition or make a complete backup. Do your Ubuntu update and then you can move everything back. Questions? Um, you mentioned that you created an uh, icon for Arca OS or OS 2 systems yep. because Arca OS is the only OS 2 system which uh, can boot from UEFI, and that uh, Refind already has uh, around 80 icons for programs. Uh, it's uh, an open source project, or at least a partly open source project. Yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, uh, suggest uh, adding that icon to uh, this project so that's Good With idea. the next uh, version, it will be available. Also, yeah. you mentioned that uh, uh, last quirk that doesn't show uh, the thing, it will automatically <coughs> boot. If you do not move the mouse, uh, and uh, the search bar uh, has uh, also an tabs where you can uh, issue questions or report bugs and this kind yeah, of thing. Sure, so, um, this can be fixed, that it's still highlighted. Um. Uh, I, I agree. Um, my problem is, I first of all always want to be able to reproduce the problem. Yes, that's a good and idea. <laughs> <laughs> because the, I think there's nothing worse uh, as, as uh, a developer myself. You, you get a report and you can't reproduce it. And if you can't reproduce it, you can't fix it. Uh, so I want to cross check that I can reproduce it. The problem is I only have one UEFI system and I am very careful about screwing it up. That's, but you are completely correct. 
I will, given the correct moment, and if I can reproduce it, we'll do that. But I said for the uh, icon, I can give that to you guys very easily. Yes, but the icon uh, really could. Uh, yeah, sure. Go that, into that, that, that is easy, that is easy next enough version to say. And, uh, sure. Everything will go on automatically, yeah. like for other operation systems. Yeah. yeah. Any questions? Uh, how long before the next <laughs> 15 minutes? Um, I would propose then in the next 15 minutes, anybody who's interested, I would go and sit down, you can come and look and see, look inside, RE5, how it works while we're here. So uh, thank you.